There's one on the spinner bait. Look at that big old mouth underwater. That was an awesome bite. <laughs> Just absolutely torched that spinner bait. That's probably, probably my all time favorite combination of blades. <laughs> that Colorado with that big willow leaf behind it. It's just a great, great combination. I don't care what the water temperature is. If it's got some color in it and I want some flash and some vibration, that combination just really gets it done. Right in the corner of the jaw, the Pro Series spinnerbait. Man, what a beautiful fish. My goodness, that fish is just absolutely gorgeous. Spinnerbaits are a fun bite, man. It is really, really hard to beat. Let's get her back in the water. Spring fishing, you know, I, I think of I think of throwing a spinner bait oh, yeah. from pre-spawn, spawn, you know, all throughout the spring, man. It really doesn't matter. You, you can catch them on it, you know, even into the post-spawn period, once those fish get on the shad spawn, there's just a lot of opportunities early in the year to, to catch fish on a spinner bait. And it's one of those great things that you can just tie on, get up around the bank, fish visible cover, cover water. You know, you can fish pretty quick and, and try to figure out a pattern with where those fish are. And, and kind of what they're holding on. That's the great thing with the spinner bait, and it's it's pretty weedless. I typically, in, in competition, I'm going to use a trailer hook on it 100% of the time, nearly 100% of the time. But when I'm just out fishing, practicing something like that, I'll I'll typically fish it without a trailer hook, and then it's pretty doggone weedless. So that's a really nice thing about a you know about a spinner bait. And three eighths or half ounce, I can target fish with it well. Lay downs, rock. You know, a lot of different types of cover work well with a spinnerbait. <laughs> Short lined it, I mean, right at the boat. Golly, that fish bit with that much line out. That is a tank. Are you gonna jump, big girl? Just a big old head thrash right there. Come on up here. <laughs> that was so awesome. That, that line, that's what I had out when that fish bit. I mean, just short lined it right at the boat. It trailed it for a little bit. That's, that's something that you'll see happen from time to time and see those fish follow your bait with live. And that one just followed it right up there. Dude, what a big one. Absolutely thrashed it. Spinner bait works great during that time frame when those fish are pre-spawn. It can be pretty good when they're actually even on the bed and certainly post-spawn, but those fish, when they're looking for a big meal, the thump that that big willow leaf blade puts off the presence of that head skirt with that Bass Pro Cajun trailer on the back of it, that's a big presence, a big profile. That's a meal for a bass, there's no doubt about it. So that's why it's great for catching big ones just like that. Spinner baits are something that I see, you know, people have a lot of questions about. And maybe they're just new to fishing spinner baits or they've been fishing them a long time but still just don't really know, you know, when to pick up which one. And with spinner baits, to be honest, there's a lot of variables going on. You know, you've got the, we'll just start with the size of the head. You've got, you know, the actual weight of the head. This one is a half ounce, um, at, which is a, a size that I carry a lot and a three eighths. Those are the two most common sizes I use personally. And I think most people would agree with that. You've also got the blade configuration, you know, the, the actual shape of the blades and what those blades do. This one is a, is what you would call a double willow configuration. The one I just had up there, that would be a Colorado willow. Some people call that a tandem. I think of tandem as being two, so I don't always think of it that way. I think I call that a Colorado Willa combination. And then you have some, you know, more of the double Colorado or Colorado Indiana, more like this one. So that's a, you know, you've got two more round blades. That's more of a kind of an exaggerated Indiana, is what I would call that. You know, it's not a full Indiana, not a full Colorado. It's kind of in between the two of those. So you've got those factors going on. You've also got just the actual color of it. And then, like I said, of course, the of course the weight one other thing that you will have on your blades is the option of doing different colors so like this one has actually got painted blades on it it's got a white one and a chartreuse the back of those bl blades are actually not painted the chartreuse has gold on the back the white one has silver um, and just like on these other ones i've got one silver blade one gold blade so yes there are many different things to look at when uh, when you're picking a spinner bait and honestly you can kind of make it as hard as you want to, okay? Just some overall generalities, things to keep in mind. And clearer water, more flash is what you're going for. So if I'm thinking 
clear skies, clear water, I'm gonna go with a double willa combination. No more than the smaller blade of those two to be, um, to be a gold with that larger blade being silver. But in the clearest water I'm gonna fish and the brightest skies, I'm gonna go for the very most flash, the, the most natural looking, and that would be two silver blades. I've got a silver and a gold here. I know that's what I'm holding, but, um, but yeah, two silver blades would be my most, you know, clearest water, most flash type combination. As it gets dirtier, I'm gonna add more gold and I'm gonna add more vibration. So in moderately stained water, that's when I'm gonna go with something that has a, you know, has the bigger blade as the gold one. The smaller blade in the front would be the, be the silver one. And then the most dirty water is when I'm gonna go with that, you know, most vibration or also in really cold temperatures because that's gonna slow it down the most and allow you to be able to fish that bait kind of hanging in their face a little bit better with those more rounded blades. The other factor of that, one thing that I've already mentioned once, but to kind of go back to, are the painted blades. For me, painted blades become a deal when it's cloudy out. That's the primary situation I'm gonna reach for a painted blade spinnerbait. You don't have the sun and the bright skies out to really generate that flash off of the metal on those blades. And that, to me, is when you really need to go with those painted blade spinnerbaits, um, is under those cloudy sky conditions. So. That's some of the factors, you know, the weight, that, that probably is the obvious, most easy one. Um, you know, really shallow water, it's obviously easier to fish a lighter bait, you know, and, and keep that up higher. But you can, fish a, you can fish a half ounce bait with those big Colorado blades and hold your rod tip high and still fish that bait shallower if you're wanting a larger profile. I guess the final thing I'll make mention of would be the trailers that I'm gonna put on there. These all have, right now, these all have a Bass Pro what would be called like a split tail style trailer. This is a Cajun trailer, um, is what that particular split tail style trailer is on there. There's times when I'll use, you know, more of a boot tail style swim bait, just a small three or three and a half inch boot tail swim bait on the back of that. And again, that's in those situations I'm wanting to slow the bait down, add some lift to it, and add a little bit more vibration and a little bit more bulk. So that's basically the two, uh, two style trailers that I use. One final thing would be, you know, a trailer hook. That's something that I use a lot myself, especially in a tournament situation and competition. I'm going to use a trailer hook the vast majority of the time. If the cover will allow it, I'm probably going to have a trailer hook on. If I'm super heavy cover, really having to slow roll it, get it right down in some heavy brush, I may shy away from it. But most of the time, it's going to have a trailer hook on it. That would be a number one VMC spinnerbait trailer hook is what I would have. So. That's some of the things. I mean, I, you could talk on spinnerbaits for an hour and not cover it all. We've got some other videos here on Wired to Fish. I've got some on my YouTube channel as well. But, um, but yeah, there are a lot of factors going into spinnerbaits, but you can really make it as hard as you want to, or you can keep it pretty simple.